In Lesson 13.2, you will define general angles and use radian measure. First, we're going to draw an angle with the given measure in standard position. To do that, we draw the angle on the coordinate plane, and the initial side of the angle is on the positive x-axis. We're graphing a positive angle measure, so we're going to move in the counterclockwise direction, which is the positive direction. And we'll move 90 degrees and 45 degrees more so that our terminal side for this angle is in the second quadrant. Now we'll graph a 400 degree angle in standard position. So we'll start on the positive x-axis with the initial side. We'll rotate in the positive direction again. This time we're going to rotate a full circle 360 degrees and 40 degrees more into the first quadrant so that we've gone a total of 400 degrees. And now graphing a, a negative angle in standard position, we'll start again on the positive x-axis with the initial side, only this time we'll move in the clockwise direction, which is the negative direction, 105 degrees. So 90 degrees and 15 degrees more. Our terminal side ends up in the third quadrant and we'll label our angles in standard position because we're approximating where that terminal side is and our label tells exactly how far we've rotated. Okay, in the next problem we want to find one positive angle and one negative angle that are coterminal with the given angle. Coterminal angles have the same terminal side, so we'll start by graphing or uh, drawing this negative 215 degree angle. I start on the positive x-axis and I rotate in the negative direction, 180 degrees and 35 degrees more, so the terminal side stops in the second quadrant. Now to graph one positive angle that will stop at that same terminal side, how far do I have to go? I have to go 360 degrees minus that 215, which is going to be 145 degrees in the positive direction. Okay, if I go in the negative direction to get a negative angle coterminal to our given angle, I'd want to go around a full circle and then go again and stop at that terminal side. So what I've gone and done is traveled 360 degrees and 215 degrees more. So I'm going to add those distances and get a total of 575 degrees in the negative direction. So this negative angle and this positive angle and the angle that we started with are all coterminal. They name the same terminal side. Let's try it with this 570 degree angle. Let's first graph it. So we're starting on the positive x-axis and we're moving in the positive direction. We're going to have to go 360 degrees and then how much further? To find out, I'm going to subtract 360 from 570. And I need to go 210 degrees more, so I'll go 180 and 30 more so that my terminal side is in the third quadrant and I've traveled 570 degrees. Okay, now to name one positive angle that names that same terminal side, I'll just travel how many degrees? 210 degrees, 180 and 30 more to get to that terminal side, so 210 degrees. If I want a, a negative angle that names that that terminal side, I'll start on the positive x-axis and I'll go in the negative direction and I've traveled 360, take away that 210, so a total distance of 150 degrees in the negative direction. So here's a negative angle and a positive angle that are both coterminal with the angle we started with. 
Next, we're going to convert the given angle measure to radian measure. We can measure angles in two different uh, units, degrees or radians. To define radians, we draw a circle centered at the origin on the coordinate plane, and one radian is the measure of an angle in standard position whose terminal side intercepts an arc of length r in a circle of radius r centered at the origin. So this radius and this arc are the same length, making this one radian. Now because the circumference of a circle is 2 pi r radians, there's 2 pi radians in a full circle, which means we start with 0 radians, we travel halfway, and we've gone pi radians, and a full circle is going to be 2 pi radians. And 2 pi radians is equivalent then to 360 degrees. Pi radians is equivalent to 180 degrees. That's a half a circle. So we use this fact to convert from 75 degrees to radians. I would use a unit multiplier. I'd multiply by a form of 1 in order to not change the value, but to change the unit. And I want to get rid of degrees, so I'm going to put 180 degrees in the denominator. And that's equivalent to pi radians. So I've just created a form of 1, a unit multiplier, that I can multiply to 75 degrees. So simplifying by canceling like factors top and bottom, I can cancel those units of degrees top and bottom, and then 15 goes into 75 five times, and 15 goes into 180 12 times. So multiplying across, I have 5 pi over 12 radians. And they're equivalent to the 75 degrees that we started with. Okay, now let's go the other direction. Let's take negative 5 pi over 4 radians and let's change those to degrees. So now we want to introduce degrees, so I'll put the 180 degrees in the top, and we want to get rid of radians. We want them to cancel, so I'll put pi in the bottom and use this unit multiplier. So I'm going to cancel pi top and bottom. 4 goes into 180 45 times, and negative 5 times 45 is negative 225 degrees. Negative 225 degrees is equivalent to negative 4 pi over 5 pi over 4 radians. Now we want to find the arc length and area of a sector with the given radius r and central angle theta. What we need to remember about using these formulas is that theta has to be measured in radians, not degrees. So let's draw a picture of this sector of the circle that we're talking about. It's this pie-shaped piece, and the arc length is s. The radius of this one is 4 inches, and theta is pi over 6. It's given in radians. Theta is given in radians, so we can go ahead and find our arc length. In for radius, we want to substitute 4, and in for theta, pi over 6. We just have to multiply. I'm going to cancel a factor of 2 top and bottom first. and then multiply across. So I have 2 pi over 3 inches for an arc length of this sector. Now we want the area of the sector also, the measure of the inside of this pie-shaped piece. So area is 1 half radius squared, and radius is 4, so I'll put 4 squared. Uh, and theta is pi over 6. And now simplifying, I know that 4 squared in the top is 16, and 2 goes into 16 8 times. I still have a factor of 2 top and bottom, because 2 goes into 8 4 times, and into 6 3 times. So multiplying across this time, I'm getting 4 pi over 3. 
square inches for an area of that sector. Okay, in the second problem here, before we could uh, use our formulas for arc length and area, we'd have to convert this uh, theta, which is given in 150 degrees, to radians. So I'll use a unit multiplier to do that again. And I want to change to radians, so I'll get rid of degrees by putting 180 degrees in the denominator and pi in the numerator. Now, factor of 10 and degrees will cancel top and bottom. 3 goes into 15 5 times and into 18 6 times, so I'm left with 5 pi over 6 radians, equivalent to that 150 degrees. So now this sector of the circle has labels the 12 foot radius. We're going to find arc length and the theta measures 5 pi over 6 radians. So let's quickly find the arc length s. Um, we'll substitute in 12 for radius and 5 pi over 6 for theta. 6 goes into 12 twice, and 2 times 5 is 10. So we get 10 pi feet for the length of the arc. And now we want area. So we'll substitute it in again in for radius 12, which is 12 squared. And theta is 5 pi over 6. Okay, so in the denominator I have 2 times 6, which is 12, so I can cancel those factors and get rid of one of those factors of 12 in the numerator. So I'm left with 5 times 12, which is 60. So I have 60 pi square feet for an area of this sector. Okay, now we want to evaluate the trigonometric function uh, given here using a calculator if necessary, but if possible, give an exact answer. And pi over 4, since pi is equivalent to 180 degrees, 180 divided by 4 is 45. So we're really finding the sine of a 45 degree angle, and that's one of our special angles. So we can give an exact answer here. If we draw our triangle, our 45, 45, 90 degree triangle, the sides are in the ratio 1, 1, the square root of 2. So applying our definition of sine, the sine of this 45 degree, or 45 degree angle is going to be opposite over hypotenuse, 1 over the square root of 2. And of course we have to rationalize that denominator, so we'll multiply by a form of 1, the square root of 2 over itself, and get the square root of 2 over 2 as our ratio. So the sine of pi over 4 is equal to square root of 2 over 2. Let's do the same thing with the cosine of pi over 6. Pi is 180 degrees, so 180 divided by 6 is just 30. So we're really finding the cosine of a 30 degree angle here. And we could draw that special triangle. It has acute angles 30 degrees and 60 degrees, and labels sides are in the ratio 1 to the square root of 3. The side or leg of length 1 is opposite the 30 degree angle, the hypotenuse is twice that length, and the leg of uh, length square root of 3 is opposite the 60 degree angle. Now applying the definition of cosine, which is adjacent over hypotenuse, we get the square root of 3 over 2 as our ratio. So the cosine of pi over 6 is just the square root of 3 over 2. Include with your notes of this video guided practice problems 2 through 8 even on pages 860 and 861 of your textbook.